If you are an online course creator or you want to become one, then this video is for you because in this video I am going to show you how to create an online course from a deck of PowerPoint slides. So we will get a single zip file and I will show you how you can upload this course to a learning management system where you can sell your courses. Now the way we are going to do this is that we are going to add video narrations to PowerPoint slides. You can also add just the audio and the reason is that videos are more engaging than just the audio. Learner want to see their trainer. So without further ado, let's get started. Now here I have a PowerPoint presentation with few slides and I have installed this iSpring Suite 11 which is the add-on and thanks to iSpring for sponsoring this video. This is the second in the series. So this add-on provides us all these tools and there are many tools and there are various course elements which you can insert in your slides. For example, interactions, role plays. But for the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on this player area where I will show you how to customize the player. The slide properties area where we will see how to control your slides. And then there is this manage narrations where we will be doing video narrations in PowerPoint slides. So let us start from this player. You can set this player settings when you are publishing the course, which I will show you in a minute. But before that, you can also customize your player. And to understand this, first let me preview this course, which contains only the PowerPoint slides at this stage. So I click on preview. This is my course player. This layout is called video lecture layout in which there is a slide on the right and I will be adding a video narration, a video explaining this slide on the left hand side. So this is a particular layout. If I click on this player, on the left hand side I have this select player. If I click on that, I have three different layout. Universal layout where there is only one screen in the middle. Then we have video layout which you just saw and then we have only slides which is a normal PowerPoint presentation. So for video lectures, we normally use video lecture layout and this is what we are going to use in this course. But the good thing is that as you can see, if I click on this, I can resize, I can maximize the slide or I can maximize the video. So when a learner is taking this course, learner will be able to change the size of the video or the slide. Now, in this area, you can customize your player as well. Also, you can select a color scheme from here. So once we have selected this player layout, we simply click on apply and close. Now, the second important part I would like to show you is slide properties. These are all of my slides. Currently, there are 13 slides and I was playing around with first four slides. But if you look the rest of the slides, you will notice that by default, the duration of every slide is five seconds. And there are two important buttons here. One is auto and one is on click. So currently both are selected. So for example, if I unselect this on click, so after five seconds or whatever time I put here, for example, in the first slide, I have changed the time to 15 point something. So after this time, this slide will automatically change, move to the next slide. But if I also select on click option, it means now learner can click anytime and the slide will move even the time has not elapsed. Now there is also a layout tab here as well. So if I hover over this area and I click on this little arrow, I have few options for this slide. For example, if I select no sidebar, it will maximize the slide area. If I select maximize video, it will maximize the video area. But as I showed you earlier, since the learners can change the size whenever they want, so this is not very important. On your slide, you can also add some quiz, some role plays and some interactions. These are also online course elements which you can add on your slides by clicking on this add button. So I click on save and close. So player, then slide properties and the last important thing is manage narrations. So I click on that and now I have all my slides here. 
Now at the bottom you will see the slides and audios because currently I don't have any videos here. And this is the timeline of slides. My first slide will stay on for around 15 seconds. Then my second slide will stay on for whatever time I have set there. I think it was 7 seconds. Now you can change this timing inside this area as well. If I hover over this, I can click and drag and the time period for this slide to stay in front of the learner will change. The most accurate way to do this is by changing the time in the slide properties. So one way of adding a video narration to a slide is by recording a video. I can click on this record video and as you can see that now my camera is on and now I can click on start record and record my video. And I can check this box process current slide only. And now I start recording this video. So let me record a little bit and now I can explain whatever is on this slide. And as you can see at the bottom that my recording is going on and when I am done I simply click on stop. Now this was slide 3 and if you look here my video has been attached to slide 3 and the slide 3 and my videos are now both will stay in front of the learner for the same time. So they are synchronized. So let's say I want to remove this gap from my video because there is some gap and I don't want this gap to be there. I can right click on this and I can click on edit clip and now I can simply click and drag this area and press delete. Click and drag this area press delete. But now if you look below, you will see that now I have to adjust this gap. So I can hover over this and I can move this slide towards left. So let us save this. So let us preview this. So we move to slide 3. Record a little bit and now I can explain whatever is on this slide. So let us go once again to manage narrations and now let us delete this. Now as you saw that if you record individual videos you might want to edit them and then the synchronization will be disturbed and sometimes you need some extra features for example a uniform background on all of your videos or a background of a particular color which you want to edit outside the eye spring. So in that case there are better ways to synchronize your video narration with your slide. So let me explain in this folder I have these green videos prepared for you for this particular video. The first video is a complete video narrating first four slides and then we have individual videos for every single slide and I'm going to show you how you can synchronize in both of these situations and then you decide which one you feel better and easy for you. So let me play this video first and this video contains narration for slides 1, 2, 3 and 4 but I have put this text on this video for you to understand the synchronization process. But if you are making this single video for all of your slides, you should know which part is for slide 1, for slide 2 and so on. You can listen to the video and you can synchronize in that way. So first we will synchronize this video and then we will synchronize individual videos. So let me close this and now we hit this video button again and first I click on this single video and open this. I want to insert this at the beginning of slide 1. Now the video is inserted and let me put the needle at the start of the video. I click on synchronize and I click start synchronizing and when this video goes to narration of slide 2 I stop and I go to next slide. Stop, go to next slide, start again, stop and go to next slide, start again and stop because after that I don't have any videos. Let us play this and see how accurate it was. So I click done here first and now I click play and you see here that when the slide changes and when the video changes should be same. Nearly perfect, again nearly perfect and again. And there was slight error because I was explaining to you as well but you can fine tune this anytime by moving these portions of the slide and videos. Another thing you can do is that you can note down in your video how many seconds is the narration for slide 1, 2, 3 and 4 and then you put those times in slide properties. So this is another way. Now let me delete this and now I insert individual videos. 
so these four videos and i insert at the beginning and now what i can do is i can put these videos anywhere and now this is my first video so i adjust the first slide at the end of this video then i join the second video and i adjust my second slide then i put the third video adjust my third slide put fourth video and adjust my fourth slide that's it so this looks easier because now we can quickly put videos one by one so this is one method so i hope that now you understand how to synchronize your video narration with your slides then we save this and now it's time to publish the course on a learning management system you click on this publish but before we publish we should preview the course so i click on this and now this is my course and i can adjust this maximum slide or maximum video i can adjust this i can move to the next slide move to the next one to the next one and then we don't have videos but we still have slides so i can move through my course so this course will be published as it is it can be published on my computer it can be published on a web page it can be published on any learning management system so i close this and i click on publish and now at this point there are few options publish to my computer publish to ispring space which is a cloud storage given to you by ispring when you create an account with them ispring learn which is the learning management system of ispring to any other learning management system lms and this is what i am going to show you and the reason is that you will understand that if even if you create this course in ispring you can publish to any learning management system like moodle blackboard ispring canvas talent lms which i use then you can publish to youtube video as well and there are various international standards the lms i am using is talent lms and out of these standards the talent lms allows me to use scorm 1.2 standard so i select this and i click on publish and now i can still view the course but i don't want to do that so i close this and on my desktop i got this single zip file this is my course and now i log into my talent lms and on a learning management system you can have many roles as an administrator instructor or you can view your courses as a learner so i want to be as an administrator so that i can add new course and now i click add a course i give it a name for example video lecture course i can put some description i can add a category for example test category i can select price everything provided my payment account has been set on learning management system and then i save and now in order to add content to my course i switch my status from administrator to instructor and i can see my newly created course now i can click on this pencil to edit the course then i click on add and now i select this scorm content here i can give any name for example unit 1 and now i click on upload a scorm file and from my desktop i select this zip file and click open and now i click on save and view and amazing my course is on this learning management system i can click on that i can move the slides again i can maximize the video or the slide and i can watch my course and i can enroll students to this course and they will get a login and a password or a link they can log in and they can take the course very simple so this is how you can create scorm courses and you can sell courses you can sell these courses to other organizations if you are good at math you can create math courses and sell this single file to any school or any tuition academy or any other organization and you can sell your courses so that is it for today in the description of this video there is a link for ispring you can download you can try it they have special prices for academics i hope you like this video if so please give it a thumbs up thanks for watching and see you next time